Hi guys, I'm here today to do my autumn book haul. This is all the books I've accumulated in the months of September and October. So I'm going to try and speed through these a little bit because there's quite a few of them. So firstly, I treated myself to two books and the main reason was because I really wanted this one. So this is, I think it's pronounced Gillespie and I by Jane Harris. And this is her second book. Her first book was The Observations, which I have read. She writes historical fiction and I enjoyed The Observations, but not loads. But I really wanted to give her another chance and I really wanted to read just a chunky, twisty turny historical fiction book, which this is. It's about 600 pages. I have actually read this one so I will talk about it more in an upcoming video. The very basic premise of the plot is that we're being relayed a story from a lady who's in a um, very late age in the 1930s and she's telling you a story of when she was in her 30s in the um, second half of the 1800s in Glasgow and she got very very involved with a young artist and his family and lots of dark twisty things ensued and she's telling you that story. I really enjoyed it so I'm very glad to have read it so as I said I'll talk about it more in another video. Then when I was buying that one this book was in my wish list and it was reduced from like £15 to £3 and so I thought it's pretty silly not to buy it. So it's one I was unsure if I definitely wanted. It came out last year, it's called Sputnik's Children by Terry Favreau. And I, yeah, I was unsure if it sounded a bit too wacky but because it was so cheap I thought I'd give it a go. So I'm going to try my best to describe this. This is set in our world and it's about a woman who is a comic book author. She writes about a um, comic book heroine. Turns out she is actually that comic book heroine and she's writing the story of her life and she's from another time zone and she somehow got trapped in our time zone. So it's supposed to be sort of a commentary on um, the superhero genre and lots of other things and it sounds just quite weird so <laughs> there's that one. Now I was very kindly sent a book from Russell over at the channel Ink and Paper, which I will link down below. So this is The Child Finder by Renée Denfeld. A lot of you will probably recognise her name because when her book The Enchanted came out a few years ago, it was really popular on Booktube. And I was one of the people who really enjoyed it. It was a real sort of easy read, a page turner, at the same time as being literary, and, and I just really enjoyed what it was focusing on. So this one deals with similar topics, but from a different perspective. This is about a woman whose career is to be a child finder. So she's hired by families usually when the children have gone missing and the police have failed to locate them and she's hired to find them alive or dead um, and to obviously bring the person who is responsible, if there is someone who's responsible, um, to, to justice. And this is following her primarily on one case of a young girl who went missing a couple of years before in um, a remote or sort of snowy location and we follow her as the case unfolds. So as I said, Russell sent this to me. This is signed by the author, so it's very, very kind of him. And I've also read this one, so I'll talk about this a bit more in my monthly wrap up. So, sorry if I sound a bit weird. I've got a really bad toothache and my mouth's a bit swollen. So, <laughs> hence why I sound a bit weird. This is The History of Bees by Marja Lund. And I've probably said that wrong. And also, annoyingly, I think this is translated because the author herself is Norwegian. It could be that she translated it herself, but I'm not sure. But I, if if she didn't, I can't find the name of the translator, so um, I can only apologise for that because that sort of thing really annoys me because they should, you know, give the translator some credit. But anyway, I'm trying not to buy books, hence why I've got this new release from the library. And this is set in three different timelines. That's something I really enjoy. So it's set in the past, um, quite near to our present day, and then in the future. And it's about uh, an ecological disaster, which is the loss of bees and how that affects life on Earth. I love books that are over different narratives, different locations. Um, I really like books that focus on um, ecology and things like that. And so I've heard really good things about this and, you know, always happy to read translated fiction. So there's that one. Then I was kindly sent this little stack of books, which I've seen quite a few people haul. Um, these are four newly published Moomin books. Now, I used to watch the Moomins when I was really little, so I have memories of what the Moomins look like. Like, I have images in my mind, but I don't remember the actual storylines. Um, and I remember always finding the Moomins quite eerie. Um, I remember some of the stories, I'd get quite upset by them. So um, I think it's going to be pretty nostalgic working my way through these. So we have... Moomin Land Midwinter, The Memoirs of Moomin Papa, Finn Family Moomin Troll, 
and Comet in Moomanland. So I don't know if these are in a particular order, I need to double check and I'll probably try and read um, you know, one or, or more of these during December because I feel like um, children's books are always good around Christmas time. So there is those. Now I was kindly contacted this month by Penguin because they were sending out some packages for UK Black History Month which is October and they asked me if I you know, had a preference for like fiction or non-fiction or poetry and I asked for non-fiction because I'm going to be participating hopefully quite heavily in non-fiction November. I'm trying to read um, majority non-fiction during the month and so I'm always happy to have more non-fiction books in my TBR. And they sent me these two books so I was really really happy about this. So this is The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin. I've wanted to read this for ages but I especially wanted to get hold of this very soon because I've got The Fire Next Time edited by Jasmine Ward from a library which is a response to this original essay and um, so I want to try and read this one first and then read the collection of responses so there's that sorry my mouth is really sore and the second one is Changing My Mind Occasional Essays by Zadie Smith now I've read I think three of Zadie Smith's novels and I don't love her as a fictional writer um, I think she's quite focused on um, style and themes um, and for me I find the character development a little bit lacking um, I get why she's celebrated, she just isn't necessarily for me, but I really enjoy um, listening to her in interviews, I think she's incredibly intelligent and articulate, and so I'm really looking forward to reading her essay collection. And then we have a few more books, and a lot of these um, aren't out yet, so apologies about that. So we have, I think this is called, sorry I've not got the, yeah, The Coffin Path by Catherine Clements. This is out on the 8th of February, this is a historical fiction, um, sort of scary book set in the 1600s, and it's about a young girl who lives in um, a sort of scary house on the moors um, and weird gothic things start to happen. So there's that one. This one sounds a lot scarier than stuff I usually read. Um, if I read gothic fiction, usually it's just like a hint of the gothic. So um, I'm intrigued to see if I'm going to enjoy something that's that bit scarier. Then we have Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Mercado. This one comes out on the 4th of January and Simon from Savage Reads has been reading this recently and really enjoying it and he told me he thinks I would love it so he very kindly got the publishers to send me um, this copy to read. Now I believe this is a collection of um, fabulism, science fiction, fantasy, all weird twisty turny stories with a very big focus on um, violence and the female body so all of those things sound amazing i've heard several people on booktube rave about this book so i think it's going to be you know really a big release it's already out in america from an indie press so yeah very excited to get to this one soonish i hope we shall see so there's that one and then i was contacted by unnamed press they're an indie press in the us and they asked me if i would like any of their um recent or upcoming releases so i asked for two of them so this is What Future, The Year's Best Ideas to Reclaim, Reanimate and Reinvent Our Future. So this is an essay collection, I think yeah, it comes out on November the 7th, so you haven't got long to wait. And it's an essay collection about the future. And there's only three authors that I recognise their names, and they are Kim Stanley Robinson, Jeff Vandermeer and Laurie Penny. Um, and there's many, many more that I've never heard of, so that's quite exciting. And these are essays, uh, commentary on all different types of things. I'll read you... Um, a couple of the titles out because I'm not quite sure what to expect but I really enjoy this sort of thing I want to um, read more. So the one by Laurie Penny is called Fear of a Feminist Future. Then we have What Self-Driving Cars Mean to a Woman in Saudi Arabia. Um, the One-Armed Robot That Will Look After Me Until I Die. Um, Black Americans and Encryption The Stakes Are Higher Than Apple vs FBI the fight for non-human rights, loads of things and I really, I say oh my god I'm so interested in all this stuff and I really am but then I never do any actual research or reading into it so I'm hoping this will be a good sort of starting off point so there's that. And then this one I think doesn't come out until, uh, god it doesn't come out until May, sorry about that, <laughs> I thought it came out in like February. So this is Mem by Bethany C. Morrow and this is quite a little book. So this I believe is set in, yeah, an alternate possibility of the last century and it's based on the concept, it's set in Canada, it's based on the concept that people can remove their bad memories and have them stored in, in surrogate bodies um, and these surrogate bodies are then stored in a, in a warehouse I guess um, and all they do is just take on these awful memories and I think it's about one of these um, robots that um, sort of breaks free and begins to develop their own memories and to sort of rebel against um, against their sort of um, 
designed usage so it sounds pretty good and I really like this sort of thing as I said so I'm excited about this one and then we have two more so I sent this next one unrequested this is the Immortalists by Chloe Benjamin and it comes out on the 8th of March I haven't read her first book although I've heard quite interesting things about it so I am intrigued by this one I'll probably um you know read a few chapters and see if it's my sort of thing before I fully commit to it because obviously I'm unsure um about this author because I've never read any of her work before and I don't really know much about her so what I do know about this novel is it's about four siblings who in 1969 go to see a fortune teller in New York and the fortune teller tells them all when and how I believe they're going to die and it's about their lives from that point and how that knowledge would change the decisions you make during your lifetime so we shall see and the last one is the one I'm most excited about. Um, I requested this one that comes out on the 8th of February. This is called Folk by Zoe Gilbert. So this came up as a recommendation for me on Amazon or Goodreads and based on my wish list. And I saw the cover and the title and I was like, I'm in. I need that book. And then I decided to do a bit more research before I fully committed because I tend to find... So I didn't enjoy The Night Circus, which I know loads of people love, just not for me. Um, I think it's a book that's very focused on the senses um on pretty descriptions and other than that there's not much to it it's like cotton candy it tastes good for a second and then the feeling's gone right so there's so many books that came out after the night circus that are endlessly compared to the night circus and that puts me off however i don't want to be put off any book that focuses on um fairy tales or circuses or um sort of you know fantastical things because of one bad experience with a very popular book so I decided to look into this a bit more turns out Zoe Gilbert won um, I believe the Costa short story award quite recently and I read a bit of that short story and her writing is beautiful it's nothing like the night circus it's very lyrical feels almost like poetry um, very focused on it's very lyrical felt like poetry and I thought it was beautiful so I decided to request this book now it sounds absolutely now it sounds absolutely amazing so I don't do this very often but I'm going to have to do this because I just think you need to hear exactly what this book is about. It says, On a remote and unforgiving island lies a village unlike any other, Neverness. In this world far from our time and place the stories of the islanders interweave and overlap. Enchantment always lurks, blighting and blessing in equal measure. A girl is snatched by a water bull and dragged to his lair. A babe is born with a wing for an arm and children ask their fortunes of an oracle ox. Folk is a dark, magical and staggeringly beautiful debut, circling the lives of one generation, their own dark folklore, twisting fates and changing lives. Amazing. And someone who um, blurbed this book said it's a story that feels as old as the hills, which is just beautiful. So I have quite high expectations of this, which are perhaps unfair to put on um, a debut novel. However, I love... Um, fantastical stories and um, fairy tale inspired stories I find it's incredibly rare that you get a successful novel that's um, literary in its style that focuses on those things I think a lot of the time um, novels that come out like that um, are, lack depth um, the, the writing style is quite simplistic and they're just not for me so I'm hoping this is going to tick all the boxes that I want it to tick so we shall see. So there is all the books. Do let me know if you have any of these or if you have them on your pre-order list. And also do let me know if you've read any of them and what you thought of them. And anything else you want to let me know down below. I'd be intrigued to know what book you're most excited about in the first few months of next year. If you've started looking into it yet. I certainly have. I, I love the first few months of any new year for new releases. So I'm very, very excited already. Even though it's still a few months away. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.